Hi, it's Monday, February 24th, and we have several systems active in the tropics this week. We have multiple areas of low pressure in the South Pacific, mainly tropical cyclones Ray and Alfred here, which we're going to be talking about both in this video. And we've also got a couple areas of interest in the Southwest Indian Ocean, one here in the Mozambique Channel, and one that's a bit hard to see on this map, but it's east of Madagascar. Both of these are likely to form over the next several days and could impact areas like Mozambique, Madagascar, and Mauritius and La Reunion. We're going to start off in the South, South Pacific as we have several areas of low pressure here, like I mentioned at the start. Now, what's happened over the past week is we've had a large area of low pressure, large trough, draped across the region. And this has been breaking down over the past several days. And now we have four distinct areas of low pressure that have formed out of it. And the main two that have become dominant is Tropical Cyclone Ray and Tropical Cyclone Alfred. And both of these could impact the land areas Ray is right now, but Alfred could in the future eventually impact land areas. Now we're going to start off with Ray because it is impacting land right now. You can see it's passing through the islands in Fiji this morning and this afternoon. The system is in a fairly good environment. The shear is fairly low and the system is able to intensify and has been intensifying really throughout this passage through the islands in Fiji. And you can see on satellite imagery we have maybe some hints of ocean water being visible beneath the eye of the storm with thunderstorms wrapping around at a healthy pace. And this is likely an intensifying cyclone as it's passing through these islands. Now, the good news is here, the system is not bonkers strong right now, and it will likely not ever get there. But given the environment, we are lucky that the system did not really have time to get that strong before it did come into Fiji. Uh, but also the system is moving at a pretty quick pace through these islands and by this evening into tomorrow morning the system will begin to clear out from the fiji islands and by tuesday evening the system should be cleared out entirely from the nation and by that point it's really all things normal in terms of weather now the system if you look at water vapor imagery is in a very favorable environment like i mentioned not much shear at all and we have this large upper level high pressure system draped right over our storm and you can see that depicted here in the HAFS model this is a specialized hurricane model showing you this very pronounced and very healthy upper level high pressure system right over it and we also have uh, should mention as well this area of enhanced winds you can see it kind of goes to green and yellows here that's very strong winds in a jet south of our storm and that's also aiding in outflow down to the south so this is a very favorable look for the system to continue intensifying and we'll likely see the system peak out once it moves south of Fiji. That's the good news here. We're not going to see this peak out in all likelihood over the Fiji islands. And uh, this peak could be a little stronger than the half model depicts here. You can see it gets down to 974 millibars. It may be a little bit limited because waters do get cooler as you go down south, but also we're going to have this wall of shear impact the system as it continues tracking south but it may be a little bit stronger than what the half model was showing here but the main thing here is that by this point this is by tuesday morning and tuesday afternoon local time this system is clearing out from fiji so weather conditions will continue to improve after the rough start to the week today and it will continue to track further southeast you could see going more into midweek the system is now weakening as it turns southeast away from these islands and that's generally what the forecast shows from the fiji meteorological service showing you the system tracking continuing tracking south through the fiji islands through this afternoon and then weakening as it turns southeast and moving away from all the island nations here but stay safe in fiji as the system continues to push through and looking out for better weather uh, later this week in the island of fiji but now we're going to move west as we have Tropical Cyclone Alfred here in the Coral Sea. This system is, compared to Tropical Cyclone Ray, a little bit smaller, and this does have some potential impacts on how the system is going to perform over the next several days. Uh, one main difference between Ray and Alfred is that Alfred is dealing with a more of a hostile environment, a little bit more hostile than Ray. And being a smaller system, the system tends to be more susceptible to impacts like wind shear and we do have some slight shear out of the north it's hard to see on visible imagery it's more visible if you look in water vapor imagery if you see on this north side of our storm we have all this outflow this upper level cirrus clouds 
pushing off towards the north. If you check underneath of that, uh, when the images uh, load there, you can see we have some flow out of the north undercutting that outflow. It's more mid-level shear impacting our storm. And this has had an impact on the system's development over the past several hours. You can see on this microwave pass that we have uh, this band of convection trying to wrap around into the northern side. But with this consistent northerly shear, it has not been able to do it from what I can tell just yet. And microwave imagery continues to show the system struggling from wind shear. Now it's possible that the system does wrap around and being a smaller system it could intensify at a fairly quick pace. Oftentimes with smaller systems like this they can go up and down and fluctuate a lot in intensity. But if it's able to overcome the wind shear because the wind shear is not overly strong it's about 10 knots that's light uh, uh, mid-level shear uh, this would likely be able to intensify perhaps to a cyclone. That's what's shown on the Bureau of Meteorology forecast here. You can see they expect it to become a Category 3 storm by tomorrow morning. So that may be a little bit hasty if the system does continue to struggle with the wind shear impacts. Now the good news is here over the next several days, the system will be remaining out in the middle of the Coral Sea. We're not going to be seeing the system impact land really in the next week, at least direct impact wise, that being wind and rain. But in the long term, we could see the system approach the coastline of eastern Australia or potentially New Caledonia uh, as the system continues generally moving south. Now, you can see on the current mid-level mid analysis from the GFS, this is showing you mid-level steering patterns. We have a weak trough sitting here southeast of our storm west of New Caledonia. What this has done is it has stopped the system from just barreling its way west into Queensland. We, you can see we have a large area of high pressure across much of Australia. If this trough was not here, this system would have simply gone west into Queensland because of this ridge here. But this trough here has kept it from just going west, and this is now just sitting here in the coral sands, likely just to sit here over the next several days. Even though that trough is weak and moving out east, what we're going to watch for next is as these systems depart in the South Pacific further east, we're going to get high pressure in the wake of these storms, and what you'll see is that as the system is sitting in the middle of the Coral Sea in the middle of the week, now we have higher pressure sitting out here in the South Pacific, now competing with the ridge over Australia. So now you have one ridge trying to push it southeast, the other trying to push it more northwest. And the net effect of this, because the storm is going to take the mean flow between these two, and the net effect of this is that a lot of these forces are just going to cancel each other out. So the system is just going to stall here and not really move all too much over the next several days in the Coral Sea. And you can see that on the GFS. This is out to Thursday and Friday. We're still generally sitting out in the Coral Sea there. And this is the spread from the GFS ensemble. So you can see a lot of these timestamps on here. They're variable with exactly where they are at certain forecast points. We have some three-day estimates here, sitting still out here in the mid middle of the Coral Sea, where some other three-day estimates are closer to Queensland. And this does have impacts onto who gets the impacts. If this does uh, perhaps hang out further east here, we could get some impacts in uh, northwestern New Caledonia. But we could also get the system to, uh, if, if it's further west, track further west towards Queensland. Now the main consensus from models that it, is that eventually the ridge out east is going to begin to decay some and the ridge over Australia is going to remain dominant. And that should allow the system to turn west generally. Now we'll likely see it come west at a weakened state. You can see we have a lot of oranges and reds here in the middle of the Coral Sea. That's showing its peak intensity. But we see them come more towards green and yellows as we get towards the coast, that's showing you the system more in a weakened state. Now, this is far out. You can see this is seven days out. This is next Monday, and this is getting to middle of next week by the time the mean ensemble track has it actually coming into the coast of Australia. So there is a lot of time for things to change, and there certainly is some potential here for something to kind of hang back west maybe come in as a cyclone. We do see that here. These orange tracks are showing you what could be a cyclone approaching the coast. But as of right now, there is no imminent threat to land from Alfred. It's mainly just a watch and wait type thing. And if you see model runs, because we have, have had a lot of model runs being posted online of showing a strong storm coming into Queensland sometime this week or next week, 
take those with a grain of salt because like I said, seven plus days out from the system actually coming into the coast, lots of things can change and it could range from perhaps a, a cyclone coming into Queensland to barely anything coming into the coast. And if that does become more of a distinct possibility where we actually see a stronger storm, we'll talk about that when that comes. And of course, the Beard of Meteorology will make note of that in their forecasts uh, as, as the time goes on. And I'll, of course, have videos as well if that does become more of a distinct possibility. But as of right now in Australia, no imminent threat from Alfred. We'll just watch it over the next week in the Coral Sea. And same goes for New Caledonia, no imminent threat there. All right, now we're going to move west to the Indian Ocean as we have two systems to watch in the Indian Ocean. You can see we have one spinning here in the Mozambique Channel. We also have another one. It's hard to see on this water river imagery, but there's another one sitting here off the east coast of Madagascar. And both of these lows are likely to form over the next several days. And the one west is likely to impact Mozambique and Madagascar. And this one east could impact areas like Mauritius and La Reunion as it kind of hooks back that way in its expected track. We're going to talk about this western one first. Now the system is going to likely not move all too much over the next several days. It's kind of trapped between a lot of steering features. There's a lot of things changing down south. There's still a very progressive flow down south, but we've also got persistent high pressure over southern Africa. So you can see right now we've got a high pressure system southeast of Madagascar. This is trying to pull the system south, but we have another area of high pressure here over southern Africa. This is trying to push the system to the north. So similar in a way to Alfred, all these flows are just canceling each other out. So this system is not really moving all too much right now. And this is going to remain the pattern as we go throughout the next several days, potentially a week for the system. And it may hang around somewhere uh, compared to others. So you can see the GFS does kind of show this drifting east into Madagascar. When steering currents are collapsed like they are with the system, small little changes can cause the system to drift east or west in certain directions. So there's not a lot of certainty on exactly where the system is going to go over the next several days. Uh, but the key message is for the coast of Mozambique and Madagascar and much of southern Madagascar is that we can expect a lot of rainfall from the system over the next few days. And the environment may be favorable as well for the system to intensify. This is the European ensemble, or sorry, this is just the parent model of the European showing you a very healthy upper level high pressure system right over our storm. And if the system does remain over water enough and doesn't just deal with any dry air from Madagascar, the system could intensify into perhaps a stronger storm. We have seen a lot of variability in model runs because some runs do just drift this east and bury it in the southern Madagascar and that stops all, all strengthening. But if it's able to stay over the Mozambique Channel and doesn't have any significant dry air intrusions, which may be a little tough just given the size of the system, but if it does, we could be looking at something more strong here for both of these areas. So we'll have to watch that as it uh, continues to go on. This system is likely to be here for at least the next week in the Mozambique channel. So we'll keep an eye on that here for Madagascar and Mozambique. But again, the key message is lots of favorable rainfall over the next several days. And we may also see some increased uh, gusty winds across both areas over the next several days. You could see the area of formation here by Mateo France, high chance of development from them. Now, the other system off the coast of Madagascar, you might have seen it as well on the GFS Ensemble. Now, this system is going to hang back or for, kind of swing east and come back down south. It's moving north right now, but it's likely to come back south towards Mauritius and La Reunion. And the environment for this one may also turn more favorable in time. Now, if we go back to the beginning, and it's hard to see because the system is not really well defined right now, but the area of low pressure is sitting here east of Madagascar. And the system is currently dealing with quite a bit of shear. You could see it if we look at water vapor imagery, the high pressure system that this Mozambique channel system is uh, currently draped underneath is shearing the system quite significantly. And there's also going to be this upper low that you can see is going to come west. That's also going to bring a lot of shear to the system initially. But as the system makes its way down south, you can see this upper low continues to back west. And then eventually, when the system starts to come south, 
this upper low was positioned in a way that may favor the system for intensification because you see all these blue streaks now moving south away from the storm that's increased divergence and we also see some uh attempt at polar or equator word outflow as well from the north side of our storm and this may allow the system to intensify especially as it moves away from the upper level high from our mozambique channel system and we've seen a lot of variability with models. The GFS is going very aggressive on this one, showing the potential for what could be an intensifying cyclone going through Mercis and La Reunion. But there is some uncertainty to this. Uh, one is exactly how much does this upper low move? Is it further north? Is it still further east by this point? That could continue to shear the system. Alongside that, does our system in the Mozambique Channel, does it perhaps shift east a little bit? Does it drift more east? which could cause this upper level high pressure system to be a little bit further east. So you can see this kind of wall of southerly shear on the eastern side of this high. Is this perhaps a little bit further east if this system is east? And that could cause our storm here near Mercer's and La Reunion to remain weak from shear impacts. Now, the main thing, I guess the key message today for Mercer's and La Reunion is that tropical cyclone impacts are fairly likely. You can see on the forecast from Mateo, France, they do have a high chance of development over the next couple of days as it tracks towards the islands, and we could certainly see a cyclone coming through here. Exact intensity, that's a little bit more uncertain. The consensus from what I've seen is more of a weaker tropical storm, a moderate tropical storm. High end at this point is a severe tropical storm to cyclone, but there's a lot of things that could change that, and we'll have to keep an eye on that closely for those two islands. That's all I've got for today. Uh, thank you all for watching, and we've got a lot to talk about, I know, in the tropics, and I'll try to keep consistent uploads on all of these systems as they continue to push through. Mainly the Southwest Indian Ocean ones is likely what we're going to talk about throughout the rest of the week. We may touch on Alfred if any forecast changes occur, but, but like I mentioned, Ray is moving away from Fiji, and so the main focus may shift off towards Madagascar, Mozambique, in Mauritius and La Reunion. But stay safe in Fiji as Ray moves through and stay safe in Mozambique, Madagascar as our two disturbances develop here in the Indian Ocean. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.